algebraic reasoning, chapter 1.5, exercises 1 through 8. I'm going to go over the odd number problems 1, 3, 5, and 7 from this set. For questions 1 and 2, determine whether a linear model or an exponential model would be most appropriate for the data. Explain how you made your decision. Well, basically, what we're going to do is we can uh, just start out kind of looking for common differences. So if we have like uh, 67.5 minus 45, we're going to get, what is that, 22.5. And then if we similarly take 94.5 and subtract out its predecessing term, which is 67. Point 0.5. We're going to get zero here, and we'll get 14, 7, 8, 8 minus 6 is 2. So we get different. So it looks like you're not going to have a linear model. I'm just going to cross that out. So we just have to presume exponential. We can just take uh, 67.5 divided by 45, see what we get. We could take uh, 94.5. Now it's giving us two choices here, so we don't have very far to go. 67.5, see what that equals. And then we can take 151.2 over 94.5, see what we get. And we go to our calculator. And the first thing we're going to say is uh, 67.5 divided by 45. So we get 1.5 for our common ratio, presuming that's what it is. Next, we're going to put 94.5 and divide it by 67.5, we get 1.4. And so they're not, in this case, exactly the same, are they? Let's do another one. We have uh, 151.2 divided by 94.5, so we get 1.6. So you can see that we're much closer. And we'll just try one more. I think the other one we have would be uh, 257.04 divided by 151.2. Yeah, 1.7. So you can see kind of in that range between 1.4 and 1.7 and thereabouts. So definitely we would say exponential. Okay, explain how we made our decisions. We looked... for a common difference difference and weren't close close okay our our ratios were pretty close. So we would say the ratios ranged between, I think I recall, maybe 1.4 to uh, to and 
So fairly close. Again, not exact. So that would be our best explanation of what, why we think exponential model is better. Not perfect, takes some judgment in this case, doesn't it? And we're going to look at three. For question 35, calculate the average ratio between successive y values. And so we're going to take all of these here and find the average of those. So the first one we're going to have is 766.08 divided by 425.6. See what we get there. Next, we're going to take 1, 2, 2, 5, 0.73 divided by 766.08. See what we get there. We're going to next take 2083.74 and divide that by uh, 1225. Point seven three. The last one we're going to do is take uh, thirty seven fifty point seventy three. Divide that by two oh eight three point seven four. Okay, so now I'm going to the calculator. Seven sixty six point oh eight. We're going to divide that by four twenty five point six. So we get one point eight. Next, we're going to take one two two five point seventy three and divide that by. 766.08. Okay, we get 1.6 for that one. Next, we're going to take 2083.74 and divide that by 1225.7. For that, we get 1.7. So far, we got 1 1.8, 1.6, 1.7. .1 and then uh, the last one, we're going to take 305, 3750.73. We're going to divide that by 2083.74. So 1.8. So I think we've got 1.8, 1.6, 1.7, and 1.8. Let's just write this down. 1.8, 1.6, 1.7, 1.8. And 1.8. So now it really asks for the average, right? So we can go down here and say, okay. We take 1.8 plus 1.6 plus 1.7 plus 1.8, sum that, and divide that by 4 for an average. So we get 1.725. So average equals 1.725. That's our average ratio. Let's write down ratio. Not a common ratio, quite. Very close. Real world, it's going to be estimates. It's not going to be a perfect common ratio. So we're using this. We're kind of introducing modeling at this point. For question 35, calculate the average ratio between successive y values. So really it's going to be similar to what we did in problem 3, isn't it? So it's going to take 
2172 over 1810.4. That's going to equal something. We're going to take 2389.2 over 2172. Okay, next we're going to take 31. 05.96 divide that by 2389.2 and the last one we're going to take 3727.15 over 3105.96 now going to our calculator We're going to take 2172, divide that by 810.4, okay, we're going to get 1.9973, next. We're going to take 2389.2 and divide that by 2172. We get 1.1 for that. Next, we're going to take 3105. Point nine six. And divide that by 2389.2. That's going to be quite a bit, isn't it? 1.3. Okay, it's not as bad as I thought it was. The last one. We're going to take 3727.15. Oops. Subtract. 0.15 and divide that by 3105.96 and for that we get 1.2 so 1.9 that's going to be like 1.2 right so 1.2 1 1.1 that's that's really close that's 10 thousands close so 1.2 let me go over here. 1 1.2, 1.1, 1.3, and 1.2. Go back to the calculator. We'll just say, okay, 1.2 plus 1.1 plus 1.3 plus 1.2 you know what's going to be it's going to be averaging out to 1.2 because we take that and divide that by 4 we're going to get 1.2 for an average so we say average ratio equals 1.2. Okay, last one the set we're going to look at is number seven. In question six, we identify whether data shows exponential growth or exponential decay and determine an exponential function to model the situation. And so uh, we are increasing. So So since we are increasing growth our let me just reword that exponential growth exp growth okay so uh change shown the table and determine an exponential function 
I think for this one, we're going to use average like we did before, but over a 10 year interval. So we're going to consider it over the 10 year interval instead of individual years. So we have x, f, x, f of x. So this will be 10 years. So we're going to say the first one we're going to look at is 7,500 divided by 2,200. That's our first ratio. Then we're going to take 25,000 divided by 7,500. Next, we're going to take 86,000 and divide that by 25,000. We're going to take uh, next 292,000 over 86,000. The last one we're going to do is take 992,000 over 292,000. Now in the calculator, I'm going to take a little bit of a shortcut, and I'll show you what it is in a second. Now, what we had is we had 2,200 over 7,500. So we can get the same thing by just taking numbers of hundreds. So I'm going to just say 75 divided by 22 and just do without entering some zeros. And we've got a decimal line. We've got a, um, I want to get a decimal version, 3.409. Okay, next, we're going to take a 25,000 divided by 7.5,000. I'll just put the whole thing in here because it's just not as clear. Okay. I'll say 25,000 divided by 7,500. We get, again, another 10 over 3, which is 3.333. Okay, decimalized. Next, we're going to take... 86,000 over 25,000, so I'll put 86 divided by 25. We'll get that. And again, to get a decimalized version, 3.44. And let's see. Okay, next. We have... 292 over 86. And to get a decimalized version, we get 3.95. And the last one we're going to look at is we're going to take 992,000 divided by 292,000. So that's what we get. Control, enter. So we get three point, so let's look at what all these are here. First one we get is 3.41, 3.33. I'm just going to do it down here. point. 41 plus 3.33 plus, let's go back up here, 3.395, so I'm going to call that, yeah, three. that's going to round up to 4, right? So if you round that 5 up there, that'll round us up the next one. So I call that 3.4, and the last one here 
is 3.4. So you have these five items here. We add these together, and we divide by five. We're going to get 3.396. So 3.396 is our average. Okay. So it says uh, determine an exponential function. So we can just start with, right here, our initial value is f of x equals our initial value, which is 2200 times 3.396 to the power of x. If we let x equal 0, we have 2,200 times 1 to get that. So this, this should hold. And of course, it's after the form of y equals initial value times the base to the power of x. That's this form of, of equation. So really, that should be it. So it's just a little tedious to have to find these individual uh, ratios and just kind of average them out and get close to them. Good luck and thanks for viewing.